So I've been receiving a lot of feedback from console players that are saying a lot of the parkour is really difficult to do on console just because it's really hard to do fancy jumps and gimmicks and whatnot with a controller. So I thought I would put together a little video here of five ideas you can do on console that shouldn't be too demanding but are still challenging enough. So let's get to it. So the first place we're going to take a look at is Roth Valley. This has been a pretty known little hole in the wall since 2013, but we're going to take a look at it anyways. If you didn't see where it was on the mini map, just rewind the video like 10 seconds, if that. And basically, you're just going to go to this entrance here. There's like a campfire there. You can kind of see. And basically, you're just going above it. Um, a little bit of mount speed to help you get up helps but if you have a dodge you can just like dodge at the wall and it should just push you up it but either way it's not that difficult to get up and for all these videos I am using my tank just because a tank is about the hardest class you can try and parkour with because they have no dodge they they don't have anything to essentially help you get anywhere so they're a really annoying class to parkour with so if I can do it with a tank you can do it with literally any class in the game or and or a controller so that's why I was using my tank in these and basically you can get outside of the wall and you can just go along the outside part of this does include going to where the travel gate is you can go behind it and additionally you can go over to where the dragon area is and if you're really really explorative and you're really really adventurous there is actually like a invisible walkway that you can like walk on in the sky but you have to be really adventurous for that and it's really hard to find something you can't see so I mean if you're really really adventurous like you can check that out but it's pretty cool but there's a lot of things too uh, just to see and like go to off the Ross Valley map that I didn't include in the video so that way you still have something new to explore and uh, I'm not spoiling all the fun, right? So, with that said, let's move on. So the next place I want to look at is the Chasm. Basically, how a map works is generally the map is enclosed in a box, and if you go over to this cool little rock over here, and you jump off it, you literally land on top of the box, but it has to be this particular rock. And you literally run and jump, and voila you're literally on the sky you cannot walk on it you have to jump across because it's a ter it's not really a terrain it's not meant for walking on so it doesn't really let you walk it's just it's a weird thing like that something cool too if you go and head down to the stairs like enjoy the scenery first like you can always go back up there but you can go and you can go down all the steps here and Honestly, like, who hasn't wanted to go down these steps and see where they lead to? Have you not? I always have. I've always been like, oh, I wonder what's down there. You know, do you really land at the other map? Uh, and, uh, spoiler alert, you don't. But it's still so cool to just run down all these steps. It's kind of hard to stay coordinated. I've done this so many times that I'm just used to it by now. But... Disclaimer, you don't have to go down the steps to get to the bottom. Yeah, a lot of them are just slanted, so you have to try and land on less slanted places. Does that make sense? But it's such a cool little adventure. Like, maybe I'm kind of spoiling it in the video, but I mean, can you argue with those skills? Come on. Such a cool little climb down. And then you can just hop down. And you're going to land on the bottom. You don't die. There's no, like, death wall or anything. But you do take fall damage. If you have some kind of character that can dodge, you can just dodge to negate the fall damage. But as a tank, you kind of just have to tank it. I bought a res resurrection scroll. And just revived because I didn't really want to have to go back and do it again. I kind of wanted to get these videos done somewhat quickly. Not to rush them, but I mean, it takes up space on my disk drive. And I don't have that much space on my disk drive. <laughs> considering how many videos I have pre-recorded that I still need to edit. Yeah, no, it's not working. So, anyway. 
yeah, you can basically run across down here. There's cool little rocks. You can basically go all the way to the end if you can find the right set of rocks to follow. The only downfall is um, you can fall and then you basically fall to the travel gate. Oddly enough, you like keep falling and it'll go black and then you'll just spawn at the travel gate. It is the weirdest thing, but yeah. Anyways. Okay guys, so the next area that we're looking at is Velosk. The jump can be a little tricky. You probably won't get it on your first try, but if y'all can run like Tower of the Mad Mage and stuff, y'all can make this jump. You just mount up and you jump at the cliff. It's a little more difficult than it looks, but trust me, y'all get it. And the rest is easy. So you just run along the edge of the cliff here. Don't fall off quite yet. And you basically just want to get to the end. And when you jump off, you are literally in the skybox. And likewise to Roth Valley, you cannot walk on top of a skybox. This little invisible platform, this ceiling that's supposed to keep players in. But in fact, it quite does the opposite in a lot of cases, kind of ironically. So basically you head down to the camp that's like at the far end, basically. And it's going to be a little bit of like a trust exercise here because even I get a little nervous jumping, but there's absolutely no way you can fall if you go like in the right place. So basically you jump back here and it's sort of solid, sort of not. And you just keep running and jumping forward. Like it'll guide you. You don't even have to try and direct yourself. You just keep going and eventually you'll just land on the cliff here and then you want to jump under the tree. Uh, the trees tend to expand out and they create barriers so you can get stuck in between the trees if you don't go under them. So make sure you go under them and then you have free reign of the rest of the map. And I got to tell you, this map is humongous actually. Like once you start like adventuring, there's a big solid area too where the ground is untextured, which sounds really, really super crazy, but it's pretty awesome actually. Like this isn't something you generally see in the game. I only know of one other location where the map has been left untexturized. That's a word. So it's really cool to see that. And overall, it's just, it's massive. Like I can't even show it in one video because there's literally so much to see. If you are, hmm, if you're not a tank, like if you have some kind of dodge or something, so warlocks, fighters, and paladins wouldn't be able to do this. It is technically possible to get to the wolf. You, you know that big wolf statue in Velosk. Um, I've done it once with a great weapon fighter, and I think, if I remember right, I took a hunter ranger up there. But, y'all, it's difficult. So, I mean, unless you're up for, like, several hours of exploring, I mean, it'll keep you busy, that's for sure. But, overall, it's just, it's a really cool map to see and to adventure. And you can literally spend, like, hours back here. It's pretty awesome. So, I'd recommend it anyways. It's a really nice adventure. And it's a beautiful map. So, with that said, how many times have I said that now? Moving on. So we're going to Ebon Downs next. And basically there's this area, the Royal Rise, and this is where you would take your group or your party and you would run the Throne of Idris way back in the day. Obviously the Throne of Idris doesn't exist in the game anymore, aside from the tales of old events in which you still don't come here and run it. Unfortunately, but the area does still exist. And there's these cool little spiky things and you kind of just saw what I did. I'm a little late commenting, but basically... You jump on top of it, you run off of it, and you land on the wall, and then you can kind of just climb the rest of the wall to the back. And this basically takes you past the normal barriers that keep you inside the zone. So it doesn't take you out of the box, but it gets you somewhere. Uh, somewhere. My bad. Now, the tricky part here, so let's like pause for a second and rewind that because it's crucial because at that part there is a box and when you go to the side you need to jump on top of the box that goes over that bridge. You do not want to just continue forward because you're going to fall down and you're going to get stuck inside the wall. So I really just wanted to point that out really super quick. 
So anyways, continuing. So anyways, yeah, there's this box and it eventually ends, but this is basically the barrier. You're walking on top of the barrier. So it's not a sky box, it's a barrier. Just to make it clear. Cuz there is there is a difference and maybe I'll do a video one day like explaining the differences or like a parkour kit 101, I don't know. It's a weird idea. I don't I didn't even think of that properly beforehand. Okay. Anyways, um Basically, you go up the hill, and the castle here has these little ledges, and you can walk on the edges, and you can climb up on the spikes, and everything. I'll leave that for you to adventure. Something that's really cool, though, is if you go around to the side, and just like all the way down to where the corner is, you're going to jump on a little ledge there, and that ledge, essentially, how do I put it? Basically, that ledge is also another barrier and you can follow it all the way around if you have nothing to like because it is invisible right and you will fall off because there's no barriers on the barriers does that make sense so using an artifact like the uh, the journals like the Envenom journal for example or the manticore talon which is really cheap on the auction house like 200 astral diamonds just leaving it casting when you see the yellow beam, you know the ground's not going to like fall beneath you. You're not going to fall off. But when it disappears, then you kind of know like, okay, I need to figure out where the path is taking me next. And you can use that as a guide. Generally, don't like run ahead, like go slow because these are pretty thin pathways and it is pretty easy to fall off. But it's so cool because it's basically like going on this little, little adventure around the map. And it literally goes from, like, the castle all the way to the travel gate. And it's very scenic. It's really, it's, oh, God. It's so cool. I remember when I discovered this back in, like, 2014, I want to say. Because, like, guys, I've been doing this a really long, a really long time. And it was such a cool little adventure. Like, oh, man. It's so cool. So, I mean, it's definitely worth checking out, too. And, I mean, you go behind the walls as well. There is still the skybox that you don't get past, but you know what? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Pretty cool, too, behind the travel gate. There is, like, a little pathway. But, okay. Okay. I'm getting too distracted here. Thinking of too many things. So, anyways, let's move on to the final one, which I think, in my opinion anyways, is the coolest one. Alright guys, let's take a look at the Stronghold. This is by far, in my opinion, the best one out of them, which is why I saved it for last, you know. Save the best for last. I would like to give Eli a thank you. He's one of the Reddit moderators, and he helped me test this out before I uploaded this, just to make sure that it does work on console. And guys, it does. So, with that said, Basically, you can kind of see where I was on the map, but it's where Hideaway Crisis is. And you just go on the back cliff there and you go right up against the wall, like right up. Make sure you're like right, right at it. And then you just change character or log out, whatever you prefer to do. And you log back in. And for some reason, the game will spawn you on the outside of the wall. It's pretty weird, but you know what? It's all good. It's a... Uh, it's a good trick. And there's other locations too in the stronghold where you can do this. This just seems to be the most consistent one since basically strongholds released. They've blocked off a few other ones since, but this one still works. So use it while you can, right? So anyways, when you go back there, you're going to find that the stronghold is actually pretty huge. Like there is so much terrain back here. That it's insane and a lot of the background too is pretty high up so you can get a pretty good view of the stronghold like it's pretty sick you know you can uh, find generally you can find kind of where the enemies are on the map as well because you're like right up on those high cliffs right it's pretty awesome a cool little Easter egg too that I don't know if Eli found when he was checking it out is there is a mine 
down somewhere, somewhere on the map. And you can get to it, just it, it takes a little bit of patience, but y'all y'all could probably do it. And it's like a full mine, and when you get on the inside, it goes further than this. I'm not going the whole way in, but there's like a hole in the middle. I'm not really sure why, but it is the perfect place to like jump off and fall to the bottom. And there is a flat bottom because you are still within the box, and... If you go down, like, you will land on the bottom. But you guys can do that on your own. I'm not going to go do that now. You know, Le leave some stuff for surprise, right? But all in all, it's like, it's a really, really cool area to go around. And you can basically go around the entire outside of the map, even by where the bickering beholders spawn, as well as the green dragon. That little lake there is usually, like, off limits, but you can, like, make your way back there and go in there. It's a pretty nice scene to just like chill and relax if like you're needing to write some kind of guild mail or something. That's what I do anyways. I find like a nice spot to just park my character and then I focus on whatever it is I need to do. Usually guild stuff, but you never know. So anyways, it's, it's a pretty cool view. If you get up high enough, usually you can see that there is a second stronghold on the other side. Like there's literally two castles. So... It's pretty awesome. Anyways, uh, thanks. Actually, wait. No, 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 no. I have a bonus one. Okay, so for the last bonus one, I'm not really going to show you anything except how to get out. Basically, it's in the river district. I did have to use my rogue because my guardian fighter cannot go to the river district. And I really didn't feel like doing the intro quest. I'm a little bit lazy if you haven't figured it out. <laughs> but, um... Anyways, there's literally just a hole in the wall. Like, you literally just go to that hole and you walk off. Like, it's that simple. So you just go, keep walking, and then you're, like, off the map. It's that simple. But anyways, I'll let you explore and see what you can find because I don't want to spoil it. It's pretty cool. So anyways, thanks for watching. Ciao for now. Don't forget to subscribe and... See you maybe later today. Little hint. <laughs>